Hey guys, Cobra here. Welcome to another Rage Challenge video. Guys, today we're doing Athea, the Tom Angel Spotlight. I'm just going to showcase her uh, as she is the first reward for finishing the hard Doom Tower. I have her for quite a while now. I've been testing her a little bit. And we guys, um, we all know that she is a bit underwhelming. But how is she in reality? Um, everybody that I know just says that she needs some kind of buffing, some kind of changes. And the devs already confirmed that... There will be some more champions in the future who will be uh, having a nice synergy with Thea. So uh, it doesn't really matter if she's not really good right now. But in the future, hopefully she'll have some other champions where synergy will be more viable. And there will be many more setups that you can use her in. But nevertheless, let's go and see how she does um, right now with kind of end game gear. And I'll show you what kind of gear I have after I show you the skills. So if you guys didn't know, uh, she's the first reward as a legendary champion for Hard Doom Tower. Um, I will be getting the next Doom Tower champion in about, well, I want to say three months because I I barely got any shards for him right now. So uh, we'll get some more in the next Doom Tower releases. Um, we get 12 times 3. That's 36 shards every month. So it's going to take a while for the next one to be actually uh, tested by anyone. So Befoulement is her A1. Uh, this is what basically makes her work. At the moment, attacks two times at random, has a 75% chance of placing a Hex debuff for five turns. This debuff cannot be resisted. So, if you guys didn't know, it's very basic. This means basically, uh, well, it cannot be resisted. That's it. She doesn't need accuracy to, for this to land, and it goes for five turns. That's pretty good, if you ask me. Five turns for a non-resistible um, debuff, that's fantastic. Each critical hit decreases the cooldown of a not of this world skill by one turn. That's her A3 will go to that immediately to see. So not of this world basically plays a perfect veil buff on this champion for three turns, grants an extra turn. This is very good, especially because the cooldown is reduced by A1. So you can actually do um, A3 in the beginning of the turn. She will be protected by that perfect veil. And then immediately she'll go with Hex Reaper, attacks all enemies. Uh, it does her A2. Uh, damage increased by 50% for each Hex debuff on the enemy team. Stacks up to 300%. Removes all Hex debuff from all enemies after attacking. So uh, if you did have any Hex debuffs on the enemies, then this will be basically uh, removed. So I do think that she is a great champion on paper. So a skill that does 300% uh, more damage based on the number of Hexes on enemies. So you can possibly have uh, a whole team against you with Hex and do the maximum amount of damage so this can even work in the spider where you can reach that 300% because it's 50% if you have five enemies against you that's 250 so you need six enemies to get that 300% um if i'm not mistaken that's that's my maths right so um definitely she needs some kind of setup for this to work so there's no other champions in the game right now that apply a hex debuff the only other place where we see the hex debuff is in the minotaur dungeon so the minotaur actually applies the hex debuff on you so on us the players we can apply it back but that hex debuff basically uh, helps the minotaur do 2x damage on you uh, when he uses a specific skill on you so um, that definitely helps the minotaur but it doesn't work the same for us so the hex debuff by its own doesn't do anything more than um, just being a good thing for hex reaver right here so uh, you can have the hex debuff and actually help your other champions do more damage it only works with hex reaver at the moment uh, and as far as we know, there's no other explanations regarding Hex and any future changes to Hex, at least from champions that apply it. So finally, she also has Cruel Angel. Her passive has a 50% chance of placing a True Fear debuff on all enemies for one turn when an enemy loses 30% of more of their max HP in a single hit. So what I think about this, I think this is a great thing to have. But what I don't like is that this is a... Um, a skill that basically you need accuracy for this to land so not only is a 50 percent chance you also need accuracy so if you're building out a huge huge nuker as thea should be since she's an attack champion attack based champion so um, i would say that this needs to be changed as it cannot be resisted and just leave the 50 percent chance there it's fine but uh, this has the condition of actually nuking an enemy and also uh, going over that 50% chance. So I think these needs a little bit of work. So let's go over the gear that I have on her. As you can see, it's good gear. 69,000 power there with three cruel sets, which give me 15% uh, attack each, plus a 5% chance to ignore defense uh, for each set. I went primarily focusing on speed, some accuracy, and mostly critical rate. This is, of course, not the best kind of gear that I could put on her at the moment, but I am still testing uh, some gears out. 
She does have overall 5,000 attack, which is fantastic. Still, uh, 153 in terms of speed, 100% crit rate, which you need. 245 critical damage and some accuracy there, 129. Uh, that's very low, to be honest, if I want to land those true fears. But I'm not really looking to land the true fears. And her A1 cannot be resisted, so I don't really care for accuracy. I just want to see her brute damage uh, with a big A2. Finally, masteries, guys. I went for uh, Hell Smasher right here for that additional, uh, you know, ignore defense on a 50% chance. This is great when it does proc, it gives you a ton more damage. And of course, every other uh, new King skill right here. I even went for Whirlwind of Death instead of Ruthless Ambush. I could have gone for this one, but I think um, uh, Whirlwind of Death is way better for dungeons, but also for um, just you know, general progression. So, uh, Cycle of Violence is always, always great to have on the Nuker Champion. And I also went for Stoke to Fury because I was testing her out with Gurb Tuck. So, I wanted to see if she has any kind of debuff on how much damage she can actually di dish out on enemies. So, I went Defense Route. The reason that I went for the Defense Route is because the Portree, in my opinion, is not useful on her. Maybe the Lore of Seal would give you some extra stats. Maybe, okay, the Evil Eye would be good, but the extra accuracy only helps her really for that passive, that true fear. And you cannot really extend any of her um, of her um, debuffs. So true fear cannot be extended. Hex, although it's not stated here, Hex is on a five turn duration. So that's pretty long. Uh, if you ask me, you're going to have a ton of time to actually apply it uh, again and again on enemies. It cannot be resisted. So getting Master Hexer, it's, it's not useful. Although it doesn't state that Hex cannot be um, extended I would I would think that it could be because they would have added it if it couldn't be extended anyhow I just went defense route I think the retribution master is actually pretty good because if she does counter attack she will actually apply a hex on the enemy which will help her get some more damage um, on the specific target so uh, the idea behind her is to do a kind of setup in the beginning where you do apply those hexes and then you go for the big nuke and the problem with that is as you guys can imagine there's a big problem with that because it means that the fight has to go for longer than it should. And the meta right now, at least in arena, is not that. The meta right now is you get a turn, you go in, you nuke. There is no chance for you to go twice before the enemy basically nukes you. If you don't nuke the enemy first, then you're going in with a different setup, and more defensive setups. And those are not meta. Those will not be the ones uh, which will be pushing for number one and platinum, at least from my experience and from... Uh, what I gather from watching other people, um, you know, streams or videos who act actively push for a classic arena uh, pushes. So let's go and see. Um, we're in a good spot right here in classic arena. So 4,200 rating. That's not low. That's not too high. We're uh, 200 rating away from plat. So we can still find good teams, but uh, it's mostly going to be on the lower end uh, of teams. And let's see what kind of damage we can dish out with uh, with Thea. So I'm going to have my normal team and let's see what she can do on auto without me doing anything. So I usually use my Tranda. Tranda is number one in terms of nuking. The best gear should go on her and that's how I have her built. So let's see. We do the uh, Terminator boost here. Uh, then my then my uh, <laughs> Madam Series applies the defense down. And then we should have Thea actually getting that extra turn here and doing that big nuke. As you can see, 80,000 on the big Big burst right there uh, without the hex. So ideally, if you could have four debuffs on all of them, four hexes, then uh, Thea would be bringing a 200% boost on her damage. So 80,000 uh, times that by two, which is 200%. Uh, that would have been a solid, solid nuke of over 200,000 uh, damage on her A2 without uh, a weekend debuff on the enemy. So uh, let's just uh, kill off this team and see what we can do. So the true fear is applied on that uh, uh, on that Kaimar, and we basically win just because of uh, getting those extra turns. So the A1 there did a 15 and another 15k there. So let's do a couple more fights and see if we can actually do a more slow setup and see the potential damage that we can output. So I'm going to put some tanky champions in there, and I'm also going to put a defense down weekend uh, from from Lydia. So let me see if a more tanky setup and a manual setup, we can get some big, big numbers. So the idea behind this is that, uh, let me do an A2 here. So uh, defense down and we can, um, let me do a provoke. So nobody does anything smart there. 
And uh, yeah, let's start out Thea with her A1. So we can actually do this, take an extra turn. I'm gonna do the A1. <laughs> it actually did a lot of damage there, 50,000 damage uh, on just that A1. So I don't think that's bad in terms of damage, but I was trying to test out the Hex. Uh, we can test it out in uh, in a dungeon or something where the where the targets have way more health. So there's a two fear there. <laughs> I didn't expect that big burst. So um, so far it seems that when you have a proper setup, she does do a lot of damage. So I want to test it out again. Uh, let's test the A2 here. With uh, I do have an attack down, so it won't be that big. Yeah, twenty five thousand. So uh, let me do one more, and uh, this time, <laughs> uh, this time let's see. So, um, do get the attack up, defense down, weaken, uh, let's do the provoke, and I want to see Thea's big A2, and, and see the burst now, how much should, should this be? So 96,000, 97,000, pretty solid nuke. Uh, of course, this won't work against enemies such as Rotos, so be very careful if you're using here against Rotos. Of course, if you are watching this video as an endgame player, then you probably don't need this kind of advice, but it's good to just give it out to players who might be new and interested in watching a spotlight like this. So let's go out and test uh, and test her damage in targets where, uh, let's go in the dungeons actually and see what kind of damage we can give out with Thea. So now guys, let's do a damage test on her without the hexes again, because unfortunately we can't do the setup and also do uh, the big burst. Let's see, so we apply a defense down, uh, we're gonna do some poisons with Battle Kazar. We're gonna do Gurp Tux, uh poisons, which give us a ton of damage because of the poisons on ourselves. So let's see Thea nuking now the targets. Uh, we should see some big numbers. I'm guessing over 150,000 at least. The wave should be down uh, if if my my calculation are correct. So 20% from here, another 20% from here, another 20% from her uh, mastery. So this should be. Big burst, 124,000, 125. Wow, um, hmm. that was way lower than I thought. Maybe something didn't proc correctly. I don't know. Uh, we gotta see. We did have defense down and weekend on most of the enemies, so definitely way lower than I thought I could take this. Maybe uh, we didn't get a proc from Savage. So let's go to the next wave and see what, what kind of damage we can do with Hexon first. So the idea would be that, uh, let's do the defense down weaken. Everybody, let's do the heal. Uh, let's do a boost. So now Thea does take an extra turn here. She applies that A1. Look at that damage, 42,000 and plus two hexes there. That's pretty solid in terms of A1 damage. Uh, I'm really liking how high that multiplier is for an A1. Uh, double hitting for about 40,000 each means that you can actually do some solid damage if you want to test her out somewhere else. And maybe she is way uh, more useful in the future for something new that's coming in the game. So maybe a new clan boss. So uh, I want to see before we actually kill the enemies. I want to see this A, A1 again. It's probably going to kill them, right? So we have uh, how many hexes do we have on the enemies right now? The bad thing, as you guys might have noticed, is that we have one hex, two hexes, three hexes. So the Hex is not limited to a champion that doesn't have it. So if, if you do apply the Hex, it means that it's going to go to any champion out there. It's not going to go to a specific champion who might um, not have it. So it can go to a champion that has it already. It's all RNG, so you can't be setting it up with, uh, with her. I am enjoying how, how much damage she does on the A1, though. I'm really surprised on that one. The A2, I still have have yet to see some big, big numbers. And that's what made us go for her. That was the surprising factor here. So everybody's dead. Uh, do we even have a hex on, we only have a hex on Apothecary there, fortunately. So yeah, we, we couldn't test it out, but um, what if a more long fight here uh, on the dragon, we're gonna apply at least one hex, okay? So at least one hex. Okay, now, so uh, we should be able to have uh, Thea now go for with her A2. There's one hex, so 50% more damage with a big A2. Let's see how much we do on the dragon. So it should be one X speed. 162,000 damage. It's pretty good. If you ask me, she removed 
the hex debuff uh, from the dragon is pretty good as a solid solid damage so imagine if you had more targets here as a as maybe like a wave ah, i'm not sure not not sure on how you would do this and not get destroyed um where can you use thea as a champion that maybe has a counter attack buff on herself so uh, when she does counter attack she applies that hex hex helps her uh, do way more damage on that a2 and maybe maybe that's kind of use for her but currently i don't see any way for her with the current champions that we have available for uh for a proper setup to go and there's even better bursters out there that do way more damage than a hundred thousand or so with the gear that i have on her so five thousand tag 250 critical damage I, I still think there's way better champions out there at the moment so i can't wait to see what other champions plion brings out that kind of company here in terms of hex they, they'll give out something to your whole team that's not currently available but at the moment that's not what we have so we can just gear her up have her ready and when that new champion comes out hopefully it's going to be a guaranteed one and not not one from shards because i have very bad luck from shards so uh, hopefully in the future we're going to have something special which i can use the on and do like a proper test of her damage potential so 73 reviews pretty low in terms of reviews i've I definitely bet that the, there's many players out there that do have uh, her already, but didn't even bother with ratings. So the reason I think the ratings are so low is because the players are just disappointed in terms of, okay, I played Doom Tower, I completed Doom Tower for three months in a row, Plarium, so what do I get? Do I get something crazy good? No, I actually get something that's way, way less interesting than I thought in the beginning. So uh, Thea is fantastic in terms of looks, her kit on paper looks great, but in reality, she, she's missing something, and I hope we get that missing part uh, in the future. So tomorrow, guys, I'll be probably pushing out a new video for that other uh, Doom Tower champion that is available, so Archmage Helmet. I'm currently farming his mastery, so when those are over, uh, we're going to have a video for him uh, tomorrow. So Archmage Helmet is actually better than Thea in terms of where you can use them, both and how useful they are uh, for your whole team. So... Uh, nevertheless, uh, do enjoy Thea and hopefully in the future, again, we get a champion that uh, hel helps her become way better than she is. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. See ya!